Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shirazi, a board certified dermatologist, and today I want to talk about dark inner thighs because this is such a common concern for so many people and there can be a lot of different reasons. I thought I would review four causes and treatments for darkening of the inner thigh area. There's, there's all the stuff online about using lemon and baking soda. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And I see my patients come into my office and they've tried these hacks and a lot of them have made their skin worse and they end up having something completely different than what Google told them online. So be really cautious about some of these DIY skincare regimens and things that you may read online. Sometimes it can actually make things worse. So let's spill the tea on dark inner thighs. But before we get started, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and share this with a friend who may find this information valuable. The first reason, Let's just normalize dark inner thighs and darker skinned individuals. Darker skinned people have more melanin in their skin and so they're gonna have variations of pigment throughout their body and the inner thigh is one of the areas that it just happens to be a little bit darker than some of the other areas just like sometimes the knuckle areas or the elbows. Some of these areas in darker skin patients is just naturally darker. It's supposed to be like that. This is what nature intended. And I don't understand why we have to fight this. It's natural, it's beautiful. Normal variant is one of the reasons. And if this is you, I would not let this hold you back from not feeling beautiful in any which way. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't care it's normal, I don't care it should be normalized, I still wanna lighten the area, well, let me tell you, it is challenging because that area tends to be very sensitive. So as a dermatologist, I do use bleaching creams in that area for patients that do want to lighten that skin. You have to be really cautious because a lot of times the bleaching creams also irritate the skin. And guess what happens in darker skin tones when you have irritation? You have hyperpigmentation. So you have to be really cautious not to irritate the area when you are trying to lighten it. And then sunscreen and sun protection is really, really important if you're trying to lighten that area because if you get sun, especially in darker skin, it just, boom, causes that melanin production to rev up and you're gonna get hyperpigmentation. We can also do really light chemical peels in that area to help lighten the skin. An easy thing you can do at home is use Dermabrite pads, which are formulated with many skin lighteners such as kojic acid, arbutin, emlica, burberry, l-ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. You can get this product with hydroquinone in it. Uh, you have to contact my office, but those ingredients help lighten the skin. They can also help gently exfoliate the area. You can also use a very low percentage glycolic or lactic acid to help lighten that area very gently. But remember, if you get any type of redness, irritation, itching, you have to stop and make sure you treat the irritation. Otherwise, you're going to get worsening of your hyperpigmentation, which is why I see these hacks online about using lemon and baking soda that just makes that hyperpigmentation worse because you end up irritating the area, it, it doesn't really work. So be really cautious of these online recipes. Number two, friction and rubbing of that area, which that area is prone to be exposed to that. If you wear tight clothing, I suggest you switch to wearing looser clothing. And if there's a lot of friction on the skin, the skin starts to defend itself. And what it does, it starts to thicken and darken. And that's how it fights rubbing and friction on the skin. And then you end up with hyperpigmentation and almost just kind of thicker, more bumpy skin there. So wear loose clothing, use a glycolic toner like Clarify, has 2% glycolic acid in it. You can also use a lactic acid that is a very gentle uh, way of exfoliating the skin. You can just use like a salicylic acid wash and start just by doing this three times a week. Make sure it doesn't irritate your skin. And then you can also use a skin protectant. Like Aquaphor spray is really easy to use in that area. And what it does, it forms a coating on the skin. So when there is rubbing and friction, it protects that skin 
from becoming darker and thicker. Number three is fungus and yeast. This is an area that doesn't get a lot of airflow and so what happens is you can get overgrowth of yeast and fungus that cause the skin to darken. Typically, you can see sort of a ring in that area and a little bit of scaling. It's not necessarily itchy, but I suggest making sure that area is very dry, particularly after you get out of the shower, you want to make sure it's really dry. I tell my patients to blow dry the area, like for 10 seconds on cool or hot, whatever feels right to you, but make sure that area is really dry. You can use a powder like Zeosorb AF that helps absorb moisture, and then Clotrimazole, which is found in some of the Zeosorbs, helps reduce yeast counts. You can also just buy Clotrimazole cream to use there twice a day for two weeks, and if there's any fungus and yeast in that area that's contributing to the darkening, then that will treat it. But even after the fungus and yeast goes away, you might have some hyperpigmentation and you can use the Dermabrite pads to help lighten that area. And then a lot of people can get breakouts in that area. Sometimes you get yeast or bacteria that get into the pores and cause folliculitis. And these are more like little bumps that come up. You can also get ingrown hairs that leave behind a brown, dark stain. And again, this is just post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and darker skin tones anytime you have a disruption in your skin, whether it's from a rash, like a fungus, an irritation, what happens is your skin will react with overproducing melanin and that's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation so it's really important to treat the root cause if it's ingrown hairs then make sure that you're not waxing you're treating the ingrown hairs if it's acne or folliculitis make sure that you're using an acne treatment like clarify pads or you talk to your doctor about medications if it's really severe and if it's eczema make sure you treat that with your prescriptions that stop the inflammation because really it's the inflammation and the breakouts that cause the pigmentation. Once the root cause is addressed and fixed, then you can come in and use skin lighteners like Dermabrite pads to lighten the area. There's also prescription skin lighteners that help with this type of PIH or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Tight clothing can actually worsen breakouts in that area, as can yoga pants. You know, we love wearing those because they're so comfortable, but that tightness and constriction can really cause any yeast or bacteria on the surface of the skin to get into the pores. Loose clothing, airflow really help with this area. Well guys, I hope that was helpful and be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and share this with a friend. Spread the knowledge. I hope that this was valuable for you. Bye guys. Thank you.